sometimes we can't get past the initial, the initial thing that God has spoken into our lives. And we keep talking about water and wells when he keeps saying, I use the water to get to your heart. Everything I'm doing is about your heart. Once Jesus stirred things up in this woman, he said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Jesus began the conversation by exposing what this woman didn't know was keeping her from what God wanted to provide. We are all lacking in our understanding. That's not a judgment or a detriment it's a reality that we have to learn to embrace so that we don't cling to things that bring us false comfort while we reject the things that sound difficult but should be leading us to surpassing joy. The Bible is very clear in teaching that we are all limited in our understanding and in need of meekness and humility that are both required for learning. Romans chapter 3 verses 10 and 11 say, as it is written, there is none righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands. There is no one who seeks God. Isaiah 55 verse 8 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways. In Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 5, God spoke through the prophet and said this, I'm going to do something in your days that you would not believe even if you were told. Do you ever wonder how many things God is telling us that we don't believe because they're just so much greater than what we can understand? There are things that he wants to tell us, but he cannot tell us, not because our hearts are not ready, but because we wouldn't believe them if he spoke them into being. Our limited knowledge and understanding is not a strike against us that we're somehow called to overcome. I believe it is a created part of us that reveals our need to be dependent upon God and interdependent with each other. We were created to see in the glass dimly. Because if we saw it all clear, it would be more than we could bear. And we wouldn't ever follow. We would go forge our own way. In John chapter 16, verses 12 and 13, Jesus said, I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. No matter the stage of life we are in, no matter how long we have been in relationship with God through our surrender to Jesus, there are things that we have not learned and there are things that he has not addressed simply because our hearts are not prepared for those things yet. He's faithful to our hearts. I don't believe that Jesus made that statement to his disciples in disgust or frustration. He was speaking it in love and kindness. He wanted them to understand, I'm gentle with your heart. And so when God begins to stir, we can be assured that no matter how difficult it feels, we can bear it or he would not be doing it. Haven't we all asked the question at some point of difficulty, why now? Why is all this happening now? Why am I having to deal with this now? Here's what you can be sure of, because I'm ready for it now. It didn't happen before because God was careful with my heart, and it's not happening later because now is the time. And so if God's stirring things in your, in your heart, in your house, in your mind, in your relationships, even in your belief system, it's not because God is fed up, it's because God has carefully molded and shaped your life and your heart until this moment, and he says, now you can bear it. Yeah. And so now is the time for me to do this work in you. This again reveals not just our need to be completely dependent upon God, but the fact that we were designed for this dependence. It's not just what God desires for us, it's what God purposed and planned when he said, let us make man in our image. Jesus is God, and yet when he took on flesh and dwelled among us, he lived in complete dependence upon God. He was about his father's business. He didn't, take, he didn't begin any ministry until the Holy Spirit came upon him. He only did what he saw the father do, and he only spoke with the, the commandment that he'd been given from his father. Jesus did not have our limitations of knowledge and understanding, and yet he yielded to our design of humility and dependence. We were created to depend upon and trust in the knowledge revealed to us by God. <coughs> 
When Jesus said, if you knew, he was not judging the woman for what she lacked. He was inviting her to receive from his abundance. When God reveals lack in our lives, he's not standing in judgment of us. He's providing us with grace, with mercy, and with abundance. There's this place where we have to stop being afraid of what we don't have. And believe confidently that I have been given everything needed for life and godliness, as Peter wrote. That in Christ, I have what I need, and I will be given what I need when it's time for me to have it. Jesus created a conversation that was difficult to understand, and then it became difficult to endure. And I think this is where a lot of us struggle. We don't like not understanding. In fact, we'll make stuff up if we, you know, let's just be honest. Like, we have theories and beliefs and ideas that we just came up with because it's easier for us to come up with something than it is to say, I don't understand. I simply don't know. And it's so dangerous.